Welcome to Switch Corner. Today we're taking a look at Warborn on the Nintendo Switch. This strategy game is combining mechs and 90s style, which just sounds absolutely great to me, but can it deliver? And that is what I'm here to find out. So with that, hit subscribe if you love the Switch, which we all do here. Join our growing family and let's get started. The story in here you'll find yourself commanding and deploying for battle in favourable armour. They call it a technologically advanced suit of war. I call it a kick-ass mech which probably owes some royalties to Gundam. Here political climate between factions is thrown out of balance and you're basically going to war, each faction with its own missions and reasons. As you battle through though you can expect to see the conflict from all sides with four different commanders each representing you know different sides of this conflict. The story it's good enough but nothing amazing if I'm honest. I never felt engaged to keep pushing forward because of the story itself and that was actually down to a few reasons. It's mainly the characters get very little depth in their personalities so I never really cared too much for any of their missions and then the writing honestly it was a little lackluster and obvious. It all just reads a little bit unnatural and rigid. Look I'll give it this, it absolutely achieves what it wanted to, it gives us a reason to go to war in mech suits, but I can't help but have that feeling that this idea of warring factions could have offered so much more suspense and intrigue. With 40 missions though to work your way through in this campaign, there's a decent amount of content to sink your teeth into, I just probably wouldn't come looking for some epic mech story because it definitely doesn't deliver that. Advanced Wars with mechs is probably the highest compliment I can give this one with gameplay and that's exactly how I'd describe it. Here at a very core level you'll find yourself in charge of an attack squad and the maps they're made up like hex tiles. This one it's turn based meaning you move your mechs first and then the opponents turn and repeat. Here you'll start mission small so things like take out your enemy opponents but before you know it the game will be asking you to do things like you know capture an objective. While there's not a huge amount of variety in it its missions I gotta say I never got bored and always found something new to enjoy mainly down to the map size and you know the units I was controlling. In regards to units then though your army we get a decent variety of mech types as a sniper, a heavy, a general foot soldier, basically what is a medic just to name a few. Each of these though they come with varying attributes and skills that will help you out in battle whether it's you know long distance attacks from our snipers which can do damage to many if they're all in a line, to grenades, machine guns and close combat abilities. Each of these attacks not only come with a range though that you'll have to work around but additionally possess one of three strengths. This is kinetic, energy and explosive. Basically the best way to look at these is one will be more effective than the others against certain enemy types so it's all about positioning each mech against another where they can do the most damage. What I actually enjoyed the most in Warborn though it was its use of the environment itself. You can actually hide amongst buildings or let's say uh, forested areas, really anything that's not flat and it actually gives you a stat boost to your defenses. So as you get to that ladder game you will actually want to start to seriously consider this because it becomes an important part of survival especially when you're low on health. Outside of your core army then we essentially get a special unit member called a deity. This is basically you, the commander, basically expect to deal more damage and have more freedom when this particular mech is called into battle. Some missions I will say you'll start with your deity in place, others you'll have to earn them through the CP gauge you see in the top left. You get this simply by getting into fights and it will build gradually turn after turn. You'll also see up there an SP meter. This same thing you know you earn it through battle but you actually utilize this so you can call other squad members into the fight. It's a really simple but fun system that always pushes you to, you know, be on the attack and be in the battle. Overall for gameplay this isn't the deepest of experiences, it's not particularly challenging but I will say the, you know, the AI here is pretty solid with your opponents and it never feels, you know, like too dumb or too easy. It's accommodating though to beginners and veterans alike, even if I think a few difficulty options for the campaign could have been a nice touch. Sure there's a few issues, like of course I would have liked a little bit more depth and sure I would have liked a few more mechs, but you know what, generally I'm happy with what is here. And yeah, it's basically mech advanced wars. Now most impressively after beating the campaign though, I want to go back. After the 15 hour campaign, there's still like a map creator to get stuck into, I can build out my own skirmishes, there's online play which I sadly couldn't try out just yet, and then my favourite piece, each mission comes with a score system based on turns taken, 
damage taken and, and so on. There's basically plenty of missions I still need to beat to get the S ranking. It's really good stuff overall. So graphically speaking, you'll either love it or hate it, and I'm a fan personally, thanks to its like 90s mech anime vibe it has going on. But detail is minimal, so there's not too much to say about it all. It is like extremely clean and sharp, and that's exactly what I wanted. The mechs they look nice and varied, while in keeping with you know a single army vibe. The animations again minimal, but they get the job done. And then the cutscenes, the characters we see, the commanders, and those they interact with are really, really nice. My favourite thing though, and it's repetitive, but each attack zooms in and I just didn't get bored of it at all. I love these moments watching either my success or failure play out. Then the maps and locations too, well somewhat repetitive I will say, the game takes us everywhere from like land to space and I always looked forward to where we would be travelling to next. Problems, the story is literally sadly text box after text box with a small amount of like facial animation which are still characters. With all this effort for style I think a few true cutscenes could have been really nice, you know, you got mechs, you got 90s, I want to see some kick-ass battles and that it sadly never gives. Really would have helped the storyline I think as well. So audio then, and it's simple stuff, a decent soundtrack that does get a little repetitive but never annoying and I like the tracks we do get. And then the combat and you know the movement and anything in game, it's some light mech sounds and weaponry. It is, I will say, more than enough and there's very little I would actually add. Again though, story, I think voice acting is another missed opportunity. With so little story presented, I think they should have went with like recorded dialogue to add a bit more personality to these kind of like cardboard cutout characters we get to meet. <laughs> So overall, Warborn at a core level, the strategy piece of it not only works, but it's great fun. Systems are solid, the battles are entertaining, and while it's not the most challenging, I still had to restart things a few times. Now that might put a few people off, but it's been designed for beginners all the way up to, you know, those veterans, and it achieves that with a simple but fine-tuned system. The only real complaint I have on this one is the story, the missing cutscenes. The real complaint for me is the rest of the package, you know, the story, the missing cutscenes. For me, having a reason to head into battle makes it so much more satisfying and this one never really delivered on that front and feels like a real big missed opportunity, especially when you factor in a simple cutscene could have made it all just feel so much more epic. At this price point though, look, I gotta say, if you want Mech Advance Wars, this is the game for you. I will absolutely be refizzling it and I'm going to be going after every single one of those S ranks. Today I'm giving Warborn a good 7 out of 10 and I look forward to seeing where they go with this series next because I tell you what, leaving this one you will just absolutely see the potential. With that hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here, join our growing family and yeah, thanks for watching, I'll see you all on the next video.